I have another story for you guys from TYT and Investigates. Um, this is the wonderful group uh, funded by our audience and they're out there doing what, uh, what other folks uh, are not, which is investigating where the money is coming from and why uh, the congressmen and the senators are making the decisions that they are. So uh, the rest of the media will report, Oh, they're Heidi Heidkamp, for example, with the person that this story is about, uh, the senator from North Dakota uh, has to vote with the Republicans from time to time. She just has to because of the state that she's in. Now that is very shallow uh, analysis of the situation. So uh, it's our job at the Young Turks to go a little deeper. And in that regard, TYT investigates goes and gets the facts to help us do that. So let's look at those facts. Alex Koch reporting for us here. This week, the US Senate will consider a bipartisan bill uh, to massively roll back regulations put in place to prevent the risky financial practices that led to the 2008 economic crisis. Now, that doesn't seem like a good idea. I wonder why they're doing that. Well, uh, first of all, I want to just dip into uh, reporting by Vox at uh, Matt Iglesias here to give you a little bit of context, and then I'll get back to our report. The bank bill would be a golden opportunity, uh, Matt explains, to exert some influence over the Republicans, especially on the issue of finance. But they haven't done it, the Democrats. The dozen moderates voting for the legislation aren't striking a deal with the GOP to get something done, they're giving away the store. And that's true. They're not saying, hey, we'll trade you banking deregulation, which could destabilize the whole economy, if you give us some progressive priorities. No, they're just saying, oh, we like banking deregulation. Hmm, curious. Why do they? Well, let's find out. So Elizabeth Warren calls this act hashtag bank lobbyist act. And she does that because the banks have been furiously lobbying for this bill and this legislation throughout. Um, there's probably good reason for that because they're gonna make money at our expense, take higher risk, which leads to higher return for them, but then potentially craters our economy. So. Hyde Camp in particular, what could be her motivations? Well, as Koch reports here, one of the bill's chief architects, Senator Heidi Heitkamp, and her husband have nearly $1 million invested in two of the bill's biggest winners, JP Morgan Chase and Berkshire Hathaway, according to a 2016 financial disclosure document reviewed by TYT Investigates. You dig just a little bit and you might find out the real reasons why these politicians vote the way that they do. Uh, I encourage you to get all the details. We have the link to the article down below uh, in the description box on YouTube and comment section on Facebook. Uh, you'll find out she has four and a half million dollars, uh, but a million dollars is still a huge chunk of that. So she has a lot to gain from uh, supporting the Republicans in deregulating these banks, at least in the short term. Hyde Camp's uh, commercial banking industries. Number one recipient of campaign donations in the current election cycle, having reported receipts of $157,000 from the bank's employees and political action committees. So not only does she have her own money invested in these banks at a huge sum, she's also the number one recipient of their campaign donations. She, I wonder why she's supporting them. I wonder if it's based on principles or how her voters are gonna vote. I mean, people say that and they don't question it at all. Really, the good people of North Dakota can't wait to deregulate the banks? That's a top priority for them, really? Have you ever asked them? I've seen the polling in, in deeply red states. They don't like the bankers. They don't like them at all. That, well, that's why Eric Cantor lost in his race. In a legendary upset, he was a Republican leader, the House Majority Leader, and he lost in a primary because his opponent ran against the banks. There is no data supporting that the people of North Dakota love giant banks, and that's why Hyde Camp voted that way. That is not why she votes that way. She does it for the donations and she does it for her personal interest. I know that that seems so uncivil to point out, and that's why the rest of the mainstream media are like, "Oh, I do declare, don't talk about the real motivations. Those are the real motivations. Okay, by the way, she's not alone, her fellow co-sponsors, Senator Joe Donnelly, also a Democrat, and Senator John Tester, also a Democrat, come in second and third respectively on that list of commercial banking industries campaign donations. Huh, it turns out the three Democrats they gave the most amount of money to turned around and voted exactly in the way that they wanted. What a wild coincidence, again, 
We have an auction, we don't have a democracy. You gotta get all the money out of politics. <laughs> Look, wolf-pack.com, okay? Wolfpack's looking to get an amendment to end this. And sometimes Republican legislators of the states will ask Wolfpack volunteers or leaders, hey, do you guys also wanna get the Democratic money out of politics? Of course, of course we do. Why would we want corrupt Democrats and corrupt or corrupt Republicans? It doesn't make any sense. We just wanna end the corruption. It's so obvious, but I'm sure you saw this all over CNN, right? No, never, never, they never talk about this. Okay, uh, back to our report here. More on, on the context of, of the, how this will affect, this legislation will affect Berkshire Hathaway in particular. Now, uh, that's Warren Buffett's company. Warren Buffett sometimes says positive things about Democrats. So Berkshire Hathaway must be awesome, right? And that's why Heidkamp is supporting them, not because of her own personal interests. I mean, they're not gonna ban benefit from deregulation, are they? And maybe bend the rules or so. Well, let's find out. Clayton Homes and Vanderbilt Mortgage, the nation's largest mobile home empire, and its lending operation, both subsidiaries of Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, formally pressured minority borrowers into unfavorable loans with hidden fees and repossessed the homes of those who couldn't pay. Same old games, and that's exactly what Heitkamp and her colleagues are gonna let them do again. So now, just to give you further context, they are not alone, the corruption is rampant. So several other uh, co-sponsors of this bill have large investments in financial firms. As of 2016, Senator John Kennedy, he's a Republican of Louisiana, owned up to $50,000. Senator David Perdue, Republican of Georgia, owned up to $100,000 and JP Morgan corporate security stock. Uh, Senator Mark Warner, worth roughly 238 million in 2015, has between 5 million and 25 million invested in JP Morgan's strategic income uh, opportunities. One mutual fund primary sponsor, Senator Mike Crapo, as he calls it, Republican of Idaho, the chairman of the Senate Banking Committee, and his spouse have up to $80,000 invested in JP Morgan mutual funds. So they all get rich, and then when the economy crashes, don't worry, you're gonna find that those same centrist Democrats and Republicans are all gonna vote for another bailout of the banks that they partly own. This corruption is gross, and it's not anywhere near democracy. What you just watched was one of the videos that we do today, but we actually do a whole two hour show every single day, it's a podcast. You could watch it in video or listen to it as audio. You can download it, you can stream it, and you get it completely ad free if you could become a member of the Young Turks. tytnetwork.com slash join.